Good morning. My name is John Knight. I am an Asian business manager for Calix Limited Australia. Welcome to our second in a series of sem seminars for sustainable aquaculture. Acid soils in Asia. Acid soils are synony synonymous with iron in agricultural ponds. In Asia, there are more than 5 million hectares of acid soils. Much of this is situated in coastal areas where ex excavation of mangroves have occurred. Major areas of acid soil occur in Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines and coastal areas of China. This is a world map showing uh, uh, acid soil distribution. As you can see, much of the planet has acid soils. A lot of this uh, affects agriculture, but in our case, we're looking at aquaculture in the co uh, coastal areas. Iron problems associated with acid soil. High pyrite levels in ponds usually occur after excavation, during pond preparation, construction of new ponds, or even after heavy rain. The problem with this is this high pyrite can produce high levels of hydrogen sulfide, which can be toxic to aquatic animals. When pond bottoms are exposed, the ferrous ions, this is pyrite, are oxidized to ferric ions, which are soluble. This causes a typical rust appearance in the pond. The problem, particularly with shrimps, is the ferric iron can deposit on the gills, causing reduced growth on either depth. If the shrimp survive, we can also see problems with iron deposition on the exoskeleton. This is unsightly and can reduce the value of the crop. Other problems with high iron. While low levels of iron, this is below one parts per million, are beneficial for shrimp growth, levels above this can cause the brown or black gill syndrome. One of the manifest manifestations of this is shrimp either digging into the pond bottom or more commonly resting on the side of ponds, particularly in liner ponds. This is black or brown gill syndrome which usually occurs between five to seven weeks from the start of the culture. This is a buildup of iron salts on the gills of aquatic organisms, making it difficult for the organism to absorb O2 from the water. The result is lack of activity, reduced growth and even death. Studies have also shown a combination of iron and manganese when ingested can build up in the gut. In both cases, the result is the same. Initial slowing of growth as you shrink to not feed and even death around seven to eight weeks into the culture. Iron mitigation in ponds. If iron and manganese are present in low concentrations, the standard pond lime is usually sufficient to stop later problems. However, if liming is insufficient or higher iron or manganese levels are present, further neutralization is required. By introducing aquacalplus at levels 20 to 30 uh, parts per million, dosage is dependent on metal content concentrations, we can solve this problem. As aquacal is a buffered slurry, this means that pH, is un unlike liming, cannot exceed pH 9. Also, neutralization is on a demand basis, i.e., we'll take out metals progressively. First iron, then manganese, and then other heavy metals if they're present. As manganese precipitation takes place at 9 to 9.5, under normal pond operating conditions, we cannot take this out. So, how do we achieve this at low pH? Aquacal plus is a particle in suspension. In the bulk liquid phase, the pH buffers at 9. However, pH at the particle surface is 10.2. This means when liquid containing metal salts come into contact with the active magnesium particles in the slurry, these metallic cations are absorbed on the active surface of the magnesium hydroxide and held permanently on the surface thus making it possible to remove metal, metal salts 
but in theory it would require a much higher pH to precipitate in a standard treatment system. So how does AquaCal flocculate heavy metals? On the right I've just shown the, uh, the precipitation curves of various metals. As you can see iron is quite low, uh, we progress through to things like lead which is quite high. Magnesium hydroxide slurry is the ideal choice for heavy metal removal from industrial wastewater streams and aquacultural ponds. The hydroxyl ion, the OH minus, in the magnesium hydroxide slurry reacts with the metal ion to form insoluble metal hydroxides, i.e. M, which is magnesium, plus the OH, sorry, metal plus OH, is metal hydroxide. At the bottom of the slide is the uh, natural process that occurs with iron. However, by add, adding aquacal, we accelerate this progress, uh, pro uh, process and make sure that it does not come back to re, uh, into the ponds at a later date. Here we're just showing some examples, uh, laboratory type examples of what you might see in a typical pond. In this case, we have dissolved 1000 parts per million of uh, iron sulfate. We have then added 1000 parts per million of aquacal plus. This is much higher than we'd normally put in the pond, but it's done for the purpose of demonstration. After an hour or so, you can see that the, uh, the iron has deposited as the metal salt to the bottom of the, the beaker and is held on the aquacal particle. These are examples of uh, problems before and after aquacal. The uh, photograph on the left is a pond in southern Malaysia. This is quite typical of this region, uh, which has quite high iron. As you can see, it is quite rusty, quite dark, and is not suitable for cultivation. We treat with aquacal at around 20 parts per million, and two days later, as you can see, the pond is quite suitable to continue your cultivation. Iron treatment with aquacal. In most cases, uh, application of aquacal at 20 uh, parts per million on water volume. 20 parts per million is our standard aquacal protocol for shrimp and fish ponds. This will drop and hold the iron to the pond in the pond bottom. Even if we have changed conditions such as a drop in pH, this iron will remain bonded to the aquacal particle. We normally see the re this reaction within 24 hours. We then allow natural development of algae. This is feed for juvenile shrimp and fish to develop. Usually this takes seven to 10 days. If this algae does not appear in the pond, some additional fertilization may be required. Once desired algae growth has been achieved, we can introduce the PL or post larva. Recommended uh, post larva is disease free uh, post larva 10 to 12 days old. Thank you for your, uh, for your attention. I hope this was uh, of interest to you. Uh, for further information, please contact our partners and distributors. In Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand, this is Maha Chemicals. The contact is Dennis Tull. His email is on the screen. For China, Taiwan and Indonesia, uh, our distributor is Holmex Jones. Contact is Simon Tam. Again, his email is on the screen. For India, our distributor is Three Little Fishes. Contact is Saganya Vijayan. Uh, again, her email is on the screen. We thank you uh, again for your attention. Um, we hope you will join us in uh, further uh, presentations on other problems associated with aquaculture, such as uh, sludge and pond bottoms, ammonia and nitrite, and increasing the possibility of increasing growth. Thank you, I look forward to seeing you next time.
Metallic sources magnesite from around Australia and around the world, including our mine site in South Australia at Myrtle Springs. We control the local supply chain, so that gives you confidence around continuity of supply. The next step within the process is we take this magnesite rock and we convert it into a powder for processing. The first step of the Calyx process involves taking the rock and grinding it and crushing it down to a very fine powder. We then sift that powder to create a particle size distribution that's ideal for end product stability. This is the Calyx CFC Calciner. It produces an ultra high surface area magnesium oxide powder to create your products. It's also built around sustainable principles. So it has the capability to capture carbon dioxide as a part of the process. This technology is core to the Calyx purpose of solving global challenges being used to provide environmentally friendly products and has the potential to capture carbon emissions from industry. Calyx has ActiMag hydration plants like this around Australia and around the world. That way we can produce the ActiMag and magnesium hydroxide fresh for your process. It also means that we've got experts who know about the product locally in your area to help you along your journey to switch to ActiMag.